Okay, uh, good afternoon. My name is Harold Westenberg. I uh, come from a large Norwegian oil company that's called Statoil Hydro. It's the Norwegian state oil company. Uh, and I'm here to present some of our experiences from um, developing enterprise uh, applications using agile development, especially with the domain-driven design approach. But first of all, I'd like to thank uh, Olaf and Eric for their contributions to this paper and to the work that we have been doing. Eric has given us a lot of good inter and interesting discussions during his training sessions in Norway. And Olaf and the ACM rehearsal staff has been giving us good advice on how to make good Uppsala paper. So, <laughs> just a few words about Statoil Hydro. It's um, the result of the recent merger between Statoil and Hydro. It's the world's third largest seller of crude oil. It has about 31,000 employees and 10,000 contractors. And it's one of Scandinavia's largest um, corporations. It's about the 50th, 50th largest on the global 500 list. The challenge that we were facing in the, in the report that we are, be, are going to give today is that we need to replace a le legacy portfolio of, a tr uh, of an energy trading system and supply operations that was showing to be an obsoleting application architecture and technology. It was getting ex increasingly difficult to, to maintain both to, the, due to code complexity and the difficulty in retaining developer competence. And it was unable to support business development and actually support what the business wanted to do. The replacement effort for the entire portfolio was estimated at between 250 and 350,000 man hours. And much of this uh, replacement effort was assumed to be in house development. So, before we could start something of that man magnitude, we had to convince our management that the uh, Java based architecture that we had chosen was suitable for the kind of challenges that we were facing in our applications which was performance. Uh, one of the challenges that we had was performance with large amounts of, of data. In today's sessions, not very large amounts, but still the amounts that we were seeing was straining the existing systems. We had a fairly complex uh, domain structures that needs to be maintained. And they were also worried about long-term maintainability of the resulting code. Um, and so, we got to uh, develop a proof of concept. The proof of concept was developed for the IBM WebSphere application server during the winter of 2005 and was developed using test first domain driven design where we had domain experts as part of the project team and had access to also to business users even though this was a proof of concept. Uh, we did so, uh, a large amount of uh, object relational mappings with Java data objects, with, uh, which is um, a standard, it's JSR243, if I remember correctly, where we mapped, mapped plain old Java objects into an Oracle database. Uh, you, we used the Versant open access implementation, and then it's since gone out of business, uh, or they have stopped supporting it. So currently we're using a Kodo from and BIA. And when we were developing, we used the local development environment with spring-based wiring and delayed the uh, deployment to the application server until later in the project. We also uh, compared the performance, our resulting proof of concept, to the existing legacy application where we loaded um, where we loaded our proof of concept application with similar amounts of data with a similar structures and similar complexity and compare the performance of these uh, on these data uh, to the uh, similar uh, test legacy applications that we had, uh, had available that was based on PLSQL um, computations running inside the Oracle database. The total effort for this proof of concept was about 3,000 hours uh, over about six months. So we did a, some other works in between. It was six developers that worked on this project. So what did we experience while we were trying to uh, develop this um, proof of concept? Well, 
we, one of the things that we really experienced was that agile software development is the way of developing comp complex software solutions. Uh, if we had been forced to design much of the application beforehand, we would have based the design on the exist existing applications without really being able to um, take in the possibilities offered by the new architecture and the new technologies that we were employing. And we also found that our use of the agile or our agile software development process and test first approach benefits a lot from the domain driven design because it communicates the intent of the code quite clearly without vast amounts of documentation and it also enabled our business users which were uh, which are proficient uh, economists and Excel wizards, so they know a fair amount of coding themselves. They were actually able to discuss aspects of the code with us during development sessions. Um, we also found that if you really need to do a complex uh, object relational mappings in an agile fashion, you need a proper object relational mapping tool that hopefully takes databases out of the equation. We didn't really worry about the database until very late in the project. We had a transparent persistence, so we could have used virtually any database. Uh, we were using Oracle, but during the development uh, phase, we uh, ran most of the tests and most of the development in memory databases. And it also proved to give us much more efficient refactoring. Uh, when we had to refactor, refactor the de domain model, most of it was uh, due to, or at the most we had to update some of the queries and some of the um, fetch groups from our JDO environment, uh, but not had to spend large amounts of effort uh, re-implementing uh, non-relevant queries. There are, however, a really complex set of choices that must be understood when you're doing object relational mappings and how you map your objects into a database that uh, re requires a lot of experience and hard work to get right. And most probably you will miss this a couple of times before you get it right, at least we did. So it's only, uh, and but the experiences that we gained during this uh, proof of concept helped us a lot when we started feeling uh, real production systems based on the same architecture later on. We also saw that uh, the resulting implementation handled our uh, requirements for data processing quite well. We had a 97% improvement in performance where a cal calculation running across the entire open portfolio of, of uh, deal trades that we had in our system was reduced from 800 to less than 25 seconds and enabled the traders to have a near real-time calculation of their open exposure and we also had a more than 95 percent performance improvement on single deal price calculations so the implementation that we chose in the architecture was very efficient both for batch calculations running on a large amount of data but and, and small single transaction calculations that we need to do, to get done as part of our transaction processing whereas earlier we had two different implementations uh, in which we had a separate batch implementation that did the batch processing and um, a separate transaction processing implementation that did the single processing. And whenever there were changes to the business rules, we had to update both the implementations to accommodate the changes. We also found that we had a significant reduction in code complexity. We were able to, uh, to isolate the different domain concepts in implementation based on a few abstract classes. And so even though uh, the figure, the um, diagram is not very clear, but um, the, uh, the pricing concepts, which, were, which is something that gives us a great headache in the current system, was uh, isolated into separate classes that enabled us to add more pricing concepts or uh, other domain specifics as they arise during our elaboration on the code uh, without uh, having to really um, update the basic structure of the code. And we did a lot of refactoring. We refactored, uh, most of the code was refactored at least once during development, but still the basic structures that we uh, developed on the first few iterations proved very resilient to changes. 
For those of you that were at uh, the birth of a feather session yesterday, we talked about how you can you need to focus on the um, the scenarios that you're working on at the moment, but still you have to look ahead. And our domain experts and their ability to look ahead and explain to us some of what was coming without going into details enabled us to take a lot of the right choices even in the beginning while we were working on the very simple scenarios of getting a simple price structure right. So when we got to the more complex price structures and the more complex computational rules, the basic structures pr still provided, uh, proved to be resilient to the changes that we needed to, to get done without breaking, um, breaking the architecture. We also later managed to do a switch of persistent technology without changing code. We have discovered that many uh, of uh, our peers, they use different persistence technologies for these kind of uh, application problems. Uh, and many of them use an, uh, some sort of object database. Since we had the recent uh, open access uh, JDO implementation we were using, we switched to the JDO or to the Versant uh, object database. And we got an even more in performance improvement. Uh, the batch calculations were reduced from 25 seconds to about 3 seconds and the individual uh, price cal calculations became some faster. We weren't really able to discern how fast they were. Uh, we all, to do, achieve this, we only changed the database connection configurations. We did no changing of the code, no changing of anything that uh, requires large amount of uh, uh, re-implementations. All the queries worked like, uh, looked like they should do. And this to us demonstrated the true value of transparent persistence because it enabled the application architecture to handle the changing requirements that we could maybe or maybe not be faced with some, some years down the road as our trading applications uh, grew larger and had more and more uh, requirements for performance. We have since fielded several successful systems based on this architecture and the experiences that we gained during this um, first proof of concept proved to, uh, proved to be valid for all our subsequent uh, projects after we have trained our developers in uh, the use of the architecture and the methods that we outline in our report. So, to sum up, already, <laughs> sometimes I talk much faster than I am supposed to, but still. This proof of concept convinced our management that our chosen architecture had the sufficient performance and handled the complexity that we needed uh, it to handle and also that agile development processes worked. There was a lot of skepticism for, especially in the user communities, of how uh, you could actually get a good system to work uh, without write, writing tons and tons of requirement specifications. Through this project we showed that uh, by uh, discussing the code and demonstrating at the end of each iteration, we actually were able to hit the target of what they wanted to achieve even better than we usually did from uh, our uh, traditional waterfall approach. And they were very satisfied about the uh, quality of the, uh, the software that was produced in this proof of concept and was kind of sad that they didn't get to see it in production. Uh, but uh, also during our later uh, um, fielding of other systems, we have used the same agile approach and they have been satis satisfied uh, with the results. It's also true that agile development can be done in many ways. Um, but for us, the test first and domain driven design approach proved to be very, very valuable tools for managing the software and its complexity. Uh, in a large complex domain like this where we expect for the final systems to have uh, thousands and thousands of entities and tens of thousands of queries and, and uh, calculations run on these entities, it's very important for us to be able to, um, um, to manage the complexity in, in this software without spending too much time on documenting it and keeping the documentation up to date.
Also, we have found that, or we know, we knew from beforehand that object relational mapping is a complex task that must, but that must not be underestimated when you uh, do it in any architecture. There is no tool that will allow you to do easy object relational mappings. And also the work towards the persistence uh, stores should not be left to the database experts. But we found that our Java experts actually wrote much better queries based on the object model than our traditional uh, SQL query writers because they much better uh, grasp the essence of the domain and use that knowledge to uh, write the right queries instead of trying to write traditional SQL queries in an object language, which is not a good idea. Thank you. So I guess, I guess we have a lot of time for questions then. Indeed. Okay. There's one. What environment did you convert from? What was the legacy environment? Uh, we were using um, uh, a Centura uh, SQL Windows client uh, on top of a Oracle database uh, where some of the domain logic was implemented in the Centura client and some of it was implemented in Oracle PL SQL packages. Carl, um, did you hide the object relational mapping behind the private repositories or how did you do that? I'm sorry, I didn't quite catch Do you use repositories? Yes, we use repositories. And that was also one of the things that um, we had to make a conscious choice about because we were um, uncertain about the future of JDO as a standard. So we had to isolate uh, all of our repository access in places where we could easily get to it with, if we had to change to another object relational mapping tool, which we probably have to do sometime, not too far in the future. The main driven design concepts that had the most bang for the buck for you? Uh, it was um, the ubiquitous language uh, that enabled us to discuss our code concepts with uh, the business and domain experts. Uh, as I mentioned, we were fortunate enough to have Excel wizards as user representatives, so they were. <clears throat> actually able to discuss our Java code and when we did domain model um, development we could discuss actual code concepts and how the code worked with them. Uh, I realized of course that this is not quite common across uh, software developments but still it was for us the ubiquitous language enabled us to to di discuss our code and the model that it represented directly with the users. Uh, another uh, another uh, um, concept that was uh, very valuable to, valuable to us was the aggregate concept because it enabled us to um, isolate our transaction boundaries and uh, and keep track of how different objects um, uh, act or how the different objects in an aggregate was accessed from the outside since with the aggregate uh, you only access the top node and then the top node accesses all the other uh, objects within the aggregate. Uh, Einar, you have any other? Uh, I think that basically summarizes uh, the value of the aggregate and through the aggregate simplifying and making the, the navigation model inside object model. So not everything is connected to everything but there is rules for how the, uh, how the object models are Connected. Uh, for those of you that were here last year, um, we talked uh, some about our strategic domain efforts, and we also had a lot of um, uh, a lot of um, benefit from the strategic domain aspects, such as uh, context maps and uh, anti-corruption layers that uh, was described earlier today. Yes. Operate with domain experts, like the business people. Uh, we used um, we used uh, whiteboards uh, since we had some of the domain experts uh, sitting next to us. So you have on -site customers. Yes, we had so we had some on-site customers, and the customers weren't that far away. Uh, we also had some customers that were uh, more remote. So we had um, we have um, as part of our. Uh, uh, of an oil industry initiative that's called Integrated Operations. 
there has been deployed a lot of uh, collaboration rooms across the company, which is an integrated collaboration experience that allows remote, t uh, remote uh, locations to cooperate on the same whiteboard. So we have electronic whiteboards uh, in our meeting rooms that allows and video conferencing facilities that also allows us to use whiteboarding uh, techniques on uh, uh, non or remote customers. Uh, and also, of course, re regular uh, net meeting with individual business users. If you have something particularly you want to discuss with one or more users, you can do it on a, on a yeah, desktop sharing or application sharing. Yes? Uh, we know that agile methodologies are uh, or is a family of methodologies. So which specific agile methodology did you uh, select? Uh, we are using the Scrum method for Agile development. Yes. Any other questions? I have one. Okay. I know you have some opinions regarding uh, standardization uh, of OR mappers in Java land. Yes. Uh, well, you use one particular tool, right? Yes. And uh, also looked at Hibernate, I believe. Yes. Can you, can you comment on standardization in this space, uh, your experiences? Um, when we were choosing our object relational mapping tools, uh, one of the things that we uh, required was for the uh, tool to separate between the projection and the filtering of result sets. So with JDO we were able to separate the projection, which is what uh, what is the information, the columns, the tables, the objects, the attributes, or whatever that you want to retrieve. And the filtering is which of those do you want to retrieve. In our uh, application, we, had a, we have, a, in the existing application, we have about 2,000 queries that use approximately this, uh, the same projection, but have different filterings. And so we wanted to be able to use the same projection for all these queries, but only um, uh, edit the filtering on the relevant queries once the domain model was updated. Uh, based on those wishes, we selected JDO as our object relational mapping tool uh, uh, because we did not find at the time that Hibernate was able to accommodate those wishes. Uh, and we also are of the opinion that uh, the current JPA uh, object or the, J the Java Persistence API, that's part of the EJB3 specification uh, does not <coughs> accommodate our wishes in that regard either. So we might have to go away from it, but I, th I still think that is a shame. Okay. Go ahead. No, no. So, say how, um, so you had a business customer working with you. It sounds like they had some, they were at least able to look at some of the code. Uh, when you wrote tests that the business users would look at, did um, you use JDA? How did you provide tests that, that sort of uh, we, we used JUnit, yes, uh, and it worked very well. We also used, um, uh, con uh, what's it called? Yeah, Cruise control yeah. for continuous integration and, and all the other tools that's common to the trade of, of building uh, those uh, building Java architectures. Sorry, were the business users able to, maybe would you show them a JUnit test? And yes. Yes, that they, they also understood <coughs> JUnit tests. So we often started out with a JUnit test that gives us the, if you want to do a um, formula-based price calculations on the following 10 sets of prices, well, this should be the result. Uh, we wrote the test, show them the test that it worked, uh, and then wrote the code afterwards. Yes? Uh, that was my question. Okay. Uh, short comment, we have used the uh, fit afterwards on the succeeding project with the uh, good effect. Yes. Cool, right? What were your experiences? Um, quite good. They were basically they were able to say, they were able to sit down and define the, the rules in, in Excel, which was the, <coughs> the preferred tool. Wow. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah. Works. Yeah, under, under uh, <coughs> And the non, uh, if you're work, working with uh, business uh, experts or, or end users that are not Excel wizards, then I don't think they would be able to understand the uh, JUnit tests. 
but uh, unfortunately uh, or fortunately our users are very good at Excel which also is a problem because they write all kind of strange things that can really <coughs> mess up our day. No more questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.